everybody, what's going on? And welcome to GNR Central. I hope you guys had a great weekend. I'm about to be on vacation about a week and a half, and I'm going to be having two and a half weeks all to myself to basically film a ton of videos before the baby comes. So let's get started with the, the today's news. So I want to thank Franz for bringing this to my attention. Now, if you guys bought the Appetite for Destruction reissue and you've got a hard copy of it, um, then you guys may have already flipped through the thank yous and the liner notes. Well, Franz sent this to me. It was a photo, and uh, he basically showed me that Alan Niven is thanked in the liner notes. Now, if you know anything about Axel, he was not a fan of Alan Niven. In fact, it was Axel's idea to fire him in May of 91. I'm guessing what maybe happened is each of the band members was able to thank a certain number of people, and the thank you came from probably Duff or Slash. Slash is still friends with Alan Niven to this day. And this upset Guns N' Roses' former manager, Doug Goldstein. So Doug Goldstein was a manager after Alan Niven. He managed the band for about 11 years. And he took to social media to call out Fernando and the band, and he said the following. He said, Fernando Labias, you guys are unreal. Niven was with GNR for three years and hired a Satan specialist to cast spells on Axel and myself. I was with Axel for 17 years and more than doubled the band's royalty rate. Niven gets thanked on the new box set and nothing mentioning me. Wow. So this sat for a couple days and then Alan Niven published his own response. So if you guys know anything about the band's history, you know that Alan Niven and Doug Goldstein are not really fans of each other. And if you read Mick Wall's latest book about the band, then you know that they don't really have good things to say about each other. So here's what Alan Niven had to write in response. So his response reads as follows. It's a pretty long letter, but he basically said that Goldstein's statement is just crazy pants and said the following. The former tour manager of Guns N' Roses has an integrity that matches his math. My contract with Guns N' Roses was finally signed on October 1996. I had started working with the band in August. Mr. Rose walked away from his obligations to extend the contract in March of 1991. To my eternal regret, I backed Mr. Rose in recording one in a million, and at that point I still believed he was not a gratuitous he was not a gratuitous artist in his composing. I still believed him to be an artist for that matter. He did not wear Manson t-shirts under my watch. He did not wear t-shirts de uh, denigrating Christ. Furthermore, Mr. Goldstein had absolutely nothing to do with this matter in which I brought Gev David Geffen to the renegotiation table. I did not participate in those renegotiations or sign off on their content. Since dismissed, I no longer had responsibility for such negotiations. In that period, I also supervised the renegotiation of the Artemis and Brockham contracts and directed Bill Ellison of ICM to contract the initial dates of the upcoming tour. Without a doubt, we can all say that Mr. Goldstein presided over the rapid disintegration of the band. I myself have no doubt my exit was designed to allow Mr. Rose to take over the name, copyrights, etc., depriving the rest of the band. The only people casting spells were Sharon Maynard, of, of whom I was unaware of, and Mr. Goldstein, who directed her as to whom he wanted out of the picture. Yoda, who's the same as Sharon Maynard, obliged by dismissing certain people's images to Rose, and Goldstein, who by his own admission, in a bizarre letter that was posted on the internet, paid her. In the end, one usually finds that evil is usually more banal than we fear, and based in, based in greed and ego. Didn't get an awful lot done after 1991, now did they? By contrast, I took an unwanted band to Wembley Stadium, my last act, uh, by basically putting the London show on sale. I am long married to a light worker, renowned in this area. My friends known, have known my spirituality and that our home is full of positive spiritual talesmen. A talisman. By contrast, just last month I was warned that Mr. Goldstein was roaming the Southwest in a mobile in a, in a mobile home full of weapons. Do I think Mr. Goldstein and Mr. Rose are banal? You might just ask, but I could possibly not comment beyond saying his statement is just crazy pants. Signed, Alan Niven. We also had an interview done with Slash. So he talked with Stuff Magazine from New Zealand and mentioned his biggest influences as a guitarist talking about Eddie Van Halen and how it shaped him as a guitarist. So he talked about the best guitar lists and said, I get real uncomfortable when people put me on any sort of ranked lineup because that's not what it's about. The most important thing is that a guitar solo has a sense of melodic purpose and conveys that strong, some strong emotion. Usually it's either fight or F, you know. It's aggressive or it's sexy, but the sound of it has got to make you want to do something. A good solo doesn't have to be fast. It just needs to take you somewhere and just like the vocal, it should have a distinct voice and its own individual personality. He continued about his major influences as a guitarist, saying there have always been some amazingly fluent and technically gifted guitarists from Chet Atkins to old blues guys like Robert Johnson and Muddy Waters. I grew up listening to that stuff and the rock players that followed after. Then he also proceeded to talk about Eddie Van Halen and how he shaped him as a guitarist, guitarist saying, 
but ever since monster guitarists like Eddie Van Halen came on the scene, there's been a real focus on new flashy techniques, and sometimes the music loses its emotional value somewhere along the way. I mean, it's great to know how to do all that stuff, but for me, the main thing is the music that moves me in some way. So back in two, October of 2018, in another interview with Jonesy's Jukebox, Slash talked about his major influence on guitar and praised Eddie Van Halen, saying, I'm a huge fan of Eddie as a person and as a player, and I loved 1978's Van Halen when it first came out. That style that he did, I have always thought that was something that he did and nobody else like it, and nobody else did it like him. And then it became a thing. I definitely didn't go down the road when I picked up guitar. So that does it for today's news. Thanks for watching, guys. Be sure to hit the like button and be sure to subscribe if you love GNR as much as I do. And go check us out at GNRcentral.com for the latest and greatest Guns N' Roses news. You guys can also go check us out on social media and go support our page on Patreon as well. Hope you guys have a great week. Take care.